Are you still? I think you're there. <laughs> I don't know. I can't. I can't quite. Maybe you're here. I, do you know where I am? I know where I am. Do you know where I am? I'll bet you do. I'll bet you can completely figure out that I am in an environment. <laughs> and I stole that line from a famous mascot named Cycle Man. Anyway, no, um, which has a whole many layers of humor to it. Um, your challenge is to figure it out. You might have to get a little creative. Um, so anyway, folks, environment, right? So behavior happens in an environment, um, but probably not the environment that you're thinking of. Uh, my guess is, is that you think the environment is just the thing in the world in which we live, right? So the, you know, we talk about environmental stuff. We talk about, um, oh, I don't know. We usually talk about save the environment. Well, what are we, that's not what we're talking about with behavioral environment. With behavioral environment, we're talking about the place in which behavior operates. The place in which behavior functions. Okay. It might be sitting on some rocks being recorded with people behind me. I don't know. It might be crawling up a wall. That sounds weird. It could be in your own home. You can <laughs> sorts of stuff in your own home environment. Uh, it could be anything, right? The environment is just the world around us. The world in which we operate, it's everything, folks. There is kind of no limit to what the context of environment is. It's all of it, right? Um, if you can go as big as you want, you start talking about universe and things, but we're not, that's not the point here. The point is to understand how environment relates to behavior because behavior, as we've defined before, is an interaction between an organism and the environment in which they live and operate. So our key then is to know what is entailed in environment. First off, um, the temporal locus of stimuli, right? So we're gonna come back to stimuli in a second, but, what, but the fact that stimuli happen is important. They can happen before behavior, we call those antecedents. They can happen after behavior, we call those consequences. And when we have antecedents, they're just things that we detect in our world, right? Uh, and then consequences are things that happen as a result of, right, of behavior. Consequences are not good or bad. We don't have to worry about bad consequences or good consequences. We just have to worry about consequences. There's no moral value here when we talk about good and bad. Now, here's where it gets weird. You talk to any kid and you say, well, what's the consequence of behavior? And they think it's a bad thing, right? We have to, when in behavior analysis, and if you're trying to understand behavior, you have to get rid of that thinking, okay? Good and bad goes away. Moral value is completely shot when it comes to thinking about behavior. Now, individual behaviors can be moral or not and ethical and all that fun stuff. That's not what we're getting at. I want you to realize that consequences are the things that happen after behavior. They're not good, they're not bad, they're just the things that happen. Save money, end up with a big bank account. That's a consequence of behavior and it's a pretty darn good one, right? So consequences are not, they have no valence. They're just there, right? So those two things, antecedents and stimuli, Antecedents and stimuli are the things that we have that affect our behavior. They happen before behavior, antecedents, and, and consequences happen afterwards. And that, when you put those together, we have an effect and we can modify responses in our world, the voluntary responses, so to speak, the context in which we, ha uh, in, in which we engage in behavior. Those contexts are the environment, right? So let, let's look at it a little more closely. What's a stimulus? That's, that's like a really tough one. No, actually, that's a really easy question, okay? All right. It doesn't have to be complex. A stimulus is anything that the organism detects. The wind on my cheeks, the, the, the chilliness in my ear, okay? The stimuli are anything that an organism can detect. They happen along all the senses, and you can get and break into all the senses and all that stuff. Um, but that's all they are. So the environment produces bazillions of stimuli. I, ah, there's so many, I can't even talk about them right now. The camera's coming closer and it makes me more serious. And we've already talked about how I talk quicker when the camera gets close to me. Why? Because that's a stimulus that I'm detecting. All right, the consequences, I get more words out quicker in less amount of time. And that means I can tell you more stuff. And then you can pause and pause and pause and pause and pause and actually understand what I'm saying. So anyway, um, the point is that stimuli affect behavior. The stimuli that come before behavior, prompt it, cue it set up the context for it to happen. And the stimuli that come after behavior maintain behavior. They reduce behavior. They increase behavior. There's all sorts of things that they do. And that's what this entire series is about. So anyway, I think that's probably enough for now. I may have forgotten something. If I did, I'll record it in another video and Brad will freeze his fingers off while he's doing it. See ya.